Hello there and welcome to the Fast Forward Show. So uh, recently we interviewed David Davies, who is a certified Sandler training for over seven years and also the author of Making Channel Sales Work. And I'm delighted to um, have David back with us today. Hi, David. Hi, Louisa. How are you? Good, thank you. Good. 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 Okay, welcome back. So last Thank time you. we spoke, um, you talked us through um, what is channel sales, because it's a term that's often used in the technology sector, but actually it doesn't only apply to technology. So we spoke about it could be franchises, it could be brokers, it could be any any company that is selling via an intermediary. Um, mm -hmm. And you, yeah, we talked about the, the challenges that come with that. Um, so we ended on, can a salesperson do both normal sales, I call it, or end user sales, right. and then transfer to channel sales? Because I get CVs from people all the time saying, yeah, I've done channel before, but I can do end user as well. Um, and yeah, you said that you weren't sure why they would, but that's what we're going to talk about today. So, so yeah. what does it take to be a, a, a good channel sales person? I mean, the fundamental skill, maybe this doesn't appear on, on, on the CVs as clear as it could, but it is cat herding. Um, very different to end user selling, right? where you have a, a, you know, a point of target, a buying cycle, a sales cycle to work with. You're working directly with the end user. You're listening and hearing their responses directly to the questions you're asking. You know, to understand the pain, you know, the budget, maybe decision-making process. Your fulfillment is direct to the client. Again, you're in complete control of the presentation, the words you use, the way you use them, the intonation, all of those things, you're in complete control. Um, so imagine being a driving instructor, um, which is a little bit uh, similar to the role of a channel salesperson, um, where they're in a dual control car. Mm -hmm. uh, but they're in a dual control car in a room that's uh, somewhere away from the direct end user. Um, and so their goal in reality it, you know, is to in some way influence the, um, their channel partners. Um, firstly, to decide to make their proposition um, in front of their end users. Because um, there'll be competition for that mind share from other vendors. Uh, then you've got to train them to do that confidently and competently. So can they get your value proposition um, across to their end user client? Uh, you're going to need to be a coach you know, to be able to um, you know, pre-call plan with your clients, pre-meeting planning, um, you know, triage, uh, post-meeting debriefs, uh, making sure that they've got all the tools they need to ha run an effective meeting with 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 whom it, who is your as the vendor your end user client but they're running the meeting for you and so you've got to make sure that they are um, you know, your channel manager is going to need to have um, great management capabilities great management skills um, not they can bring to bear because they're not that uh, that individual's um, supervisor Mm -hmm. um, that's really tough right yeah we call it managing without power it's extremely tough you are completely responsible um, for your success through others um, yet you don't have the you have the, the the power to hire your sales team but the people in the organization you've hired you have no right to fire them Mm. that's really challenging so the currency of success again is influence and so somebody in a channel management role needs to have um, really strong people skills great ability to influence multiple different personalities from the top of the organization right the way through it um the good you know organizational mapping skills and the gravitas to be able to walk on somebody else's sales floor that's not yours Mm. And command attention, mm. deliver value um, for those people on that floor to want to invest time with you, to spend time with you, to learn from you, to be coached by you, because they know that um, yeah, by doing so, that's in the best service of their client. Thank you so much, David, for sharing your insights and experience and for summing up what makes a great channel salesperson.